pastors, seminarians, and saints of the global village who wish for heaven. Welcome. I am Kim sung who is the moderator today. I sincerely welcome all of you who attended the Shincheonji online seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter. This seminar is translated into various languages and is being broadcasted all over the world. It has been enthusiastically well received by many believers. Through the word that is testified today, I hope you will have a precious time to clearly understand God's will that he has promised and discover the kingdom of heaven. Then, before we begin the seminar, we will gather our hearts together and pray to our Father God. Father God, to whom we are thankful and grateful, thank you so much for allowing us this precious life and breath, and for leading us, so that we can live a life within your love today. In particular, for your precious children of faith who attended the Shincheonji online seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter, may you please fill them with your great love and grace. Through this time today, please grant them the eyes to see the ears to hear, and a heart to understand the Bible, and also guide them to become the true believers in you, in Jesus, and in the truth. And we give all glory to you, Lord, and we pray in the name of Jesus, who atoned for our sins. Amen. Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter. Today, we will look at Lesson 3, The Order of Betrayal, Destruction, and Salvation of the Chosen People. We will have instructor Yi jae the head of the Goje Church of Busan James Tribe, who will deliver the message. Hello, pastors, seminarians, and saints from all over the world who wish for heaven and eternal life. I am Lee Jae-bong, the head of the Goje Church of Busan James Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. Thank you very much for attending the Shincheonji online seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter. The word you will observe with me today is Intermediate Lesson 3, The Order of Betrayal, Destruction, and Salvation of the Chosen People. The main reference will be Isaiah chapter 1 verse 1 to chapter 2 verse 4, as well as 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 in the New Testament. The pastors who are watching now have read the Bible a lot. So some of you may know well about the order of betrayal, destruction, and salvation of the chosen people, and some may not. But I hope that you will listen to my lecture today and find out the answer to God's will. First, let me share with you why we are examining this main reference passage. The main reference, Isaiah chapter 1, is a prophecy of the Old Testament. It is an event that is fulfilled at the first coming of Jesus approximately 700 years after it was prophesied. Except in Isaiah chapter 2 verses 1 through 4, it records the events that not only fulfilled in the first coming but will also fulfill at the second coming. The reason we are looking at Isaiah chapter 1, which was fulfilled at the time of Jesus' first coming, is to compare it with the current state of our faith world and to use it as an example for the believers today. So while you listen to this lesson, I hope that you can compare it with the state of the current churches. Jesus said that this time of the second coming will be the end of the world. He was referring to the end of the religious world though, not the entire world in general. The reason the world comes to an end is probably because there is something wrong in this world in front of God's eyes. 
From the words about the Jews showing their lack of faith from the main reference, I hope that you bring questions as, isn't this what our denomination and church look like today? Do I not have anything more lacking than these Jews? And through the comparisons, I hope that you will have a precious time to have a conversation with God through the word and to be renewed. Then let's read Isaiah chapter 1 verse 1 together. This is the vision concerning Judah and Jerusalem. I will read. The vision concerning Judah and Jerusalem that Isaiah son of Amos saw during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Amen. We will examine about the writer Isaiah, the location of the events, and even the word vision. We'll take a look at this one by one. First, the writer is said to be the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos. The reason why it is mentioned whose son this writer is, is to make a clear statement about the writer, the recorder, the prophet Isaiah. Additionally, since Isaiah is a person from the time of the kings of Judah, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, we are able to know that this book of Isaiah was recorded approximately 2,700 years ago. And if we ask what is recorded here, in one word, it will be regarding the vision. It is the vision concerning Judah and Jerusalem. When we say that it's a vision, it is not a record of the reality or the actual entities of that time, but it is something spiritual, and it records the future events. Then you must remember that the contents of Isaiah chapters 1 through 66 were not the reality for that time, and that up to chapter 66 was recorded after seeing the vision. Next, let's take a look at the state of faith of Judah and Jerusalem. If we look at the state of faith of Judah and Jerusalem when the book of Isaiah was recorded, in 1 Kings chapter 11, it says King Solomon committed a sin before God because he had worshipped Gentile gods. Because King Solomon had sinned before God, the whole nation of Israel had sinned before God. In the first commandment of the law, God had said, You shall not worship any other gods. And so serving Gentile gods was an act of betrayal. In regards to this, Hosea chapter 6 verse 7 tells us that these people have broken the covenant like Adam. And as a result of this, the eleven tribes of the north became destroyed by the Assyrians, and the tribe of Judah also gets destroyed afterwards. The book of Isaiah had recorded that even the last remaining tribe of Judah will be destroyed by the Gentiles. Now, let's read Isaiah chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Hear, O heavens, listen, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I reared children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows his master, the donkey his owner's manger. But Israel does not know, my people do not understand. Ah, sinful nation, a people loaded with guilt, a brood of evildoers, children given to corruption. They have forsaken the Lord, they have spurned the Holy One of Israel, and turned their backs on Him. Yes, the words up to verse 4 is about the betrayal of the chosen people who were reared by God as they had broken the covenant. First, it is said, Hear, O heaven, and listen, O earth. The physical heavens and earth cannot hear the word of God, and so it is referring to the spiritual heavens and earth. So heaven refers to the spirits in the heavenly spiritual realm, and the earth refers to the people made out of dust, that is, the flesh. It is God who commands them to listen. And those who need to listen are the spirits of heaven and the people of this world. 
What content did God want them to listen to? God was telling them to hear about the Jews, that is, the people of the tribe of Judah, who had disobeyed God and did not know about God. In a bit more detail, the content is about the corrupt status of Judaism at the time of the first coming, which is about 700 years after the prophecies were recorded. In order to see how the reference verses took place at the time of the first coming, when we look at the contents of John chapter 8, we can confirm that there was a dispute between Jesus and the Jews. What was the reason for this dispute? When Jesus came at the time of the first coming, he had spoken about the free law. The Jews, on the other hand, had insisted on the Mosaic law. Because they had different arguments, there was a dispute between them. But wasn't Jesus the one whom God was together with? So the fact that the Jews had a conflict with Jesus, who had served God, meant that they had rebelled against God, which in other words, was an act of betrayal. When we look at the dispute that happens today between Shincheonji and the Protestant churches, Shincheonji preaches the testimony of the prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation, which is the word of Revelation that has fulfilled within the New Testament, and the Protestant churches preach the elementary teachings of Christ only. Thus, we can see that there is a dispute due to the difference that each side claims and preaches. However, regardless of the time, whether it's the first coming or the second coming, we need to put down our own claims and perspectives by lowering ourselves and becoming more humble in front of the words of the Bible, and to have the mind to learn the word of revelation that has been open for the time. We must make sure to keep this in mind. Let's continue now on to verse 4. He calls these people as a sinful nation, a people loaded with guilt and children given to corruption. In order to understand this in detail, we will look at Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. God says that He planted the choicest vines, took good care of them, and looked for a crop of good fruits. But He laments, how come it yielded bad fruit? This is not referring to the physical trees. In Isaiah chapter 5, verse 7, it said that the trees are the men of Judah. It means that God had wanted the people of Judah who were like trees, that they would act righteously, which in other words is like yielding good fruits. If the opposite of good fruits are the bad grapes, bad fruits, then bearing these bad grapes means to have committed acts of unrighteousness, in other words, evil acts or sins. To understand this better, let's see what it says in John chapter 1, verse 11. It says that Jesus came to His own, to His own land or people, but the Jews did not receive Him, and rather they had persecuted Him. The Jews believed in the promises of the Old Testament, had waited for God to come, and waited for the Messiah to appear, but because they did not know the promises made through the Old Testament prophets, they had persecuted the work of Jesus, and ultimately, they had even crucified Jesus as well. Receiving Jesus was doing the work of righteousness, wasn't it? Therefore, not receiving Jesus but instead persecuting him. That was an act of injustice. And the words of the reference that say that they were the children given to corruption had been fulfilled. A similar event happens in today's time as well. When the time comes for the fulfillment of Revelation, the church of the seven stars and seven golden lampstands appears as in Revelation chapter 1, verse 20. And there will be pastors and people of that church of the seven stars and seven golden lampstands. Since it is said that they had worked in the right hand of Jesus, the pastors and people of this church of the seven stars, seven golden lampstands, are the chosen people at the time of Revelation's fulfillment. 
These people, however, also end up betraying God just like the people of the tribe of Judah. As we see in Revelation chapters 2 and 3, the Nicolaitans of Satan appear, so the work of betrayal happens, and the pastors and people of this place eat the food sacrificed to idols and commit adultery with the spirit of Satan. In regards to the events of betrayal, destruction, and salvation of the chosen people that have been fulfilled today, there is a record of this in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1-3 to within the New Testament. For this, we will examine further when we go over Isaiah chapter 2. Now let's continue to read verses 5-7. through 7. Why should you be beaten any more? Why do you persist in rebellion? Your whole head is injured, your whole heart afflicted. From the sole of your foot to the top of your head, there is no soundness, only wounds and welts and open sores, not cleansed or bandaged or soothed with oil. Your country is desolate, your cities burned with fire. Your fields are being stripped by foreigners right before you, laid waste as when overthrown by strangers. Yes, the words up to verse 7 is about the destruction of the chosen people by the Gentiles. As it says, why should you be beaten anymore? We can see that God is judging the chosen people who had rebelled or betrayed. What is God's rod that punishes the rebellious chosen people? If you look at Isaiah chapter 10 verse 5, it says that God takes the Assyrians as his rod, from which we can tell that when God judges the rebellious chosen people, he judges them using the Gentiles. Then, looking at the words of verse 7, it says that your country is desolate, your city is burned with fire, and your fields are being stripped by the Gentiles. It makes it known that the chosen people have become completely destroyed. If we take this word and go to the time of the first coming, the chosen people who betrayed and were destroyed by the Gentiles at that time were the pastors and people of Jerusalem and the Gentiles who destroyed the people of Jerusalem, the chosen people who had betrayed, these Gentiles were the pastors of the serpent, the Pharisees, and the scribes. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 37, Jesus had longed to gather the people of Jerusalem so much, but the people of Jerusalem did not come out to Jesus. And they were spiritually killed by Satan's pastors, the Pharisees, and the scribes, just as in the words of Matthew chapter 23, verse 27. Such an event would be the event in which the chosen people who betrayed the word of God were destroyed by the Gentiles. We can see from Revelation chapter 6 and Revelation chapter 13 that the same event of destruction that occurred in this main reference also happens today. The pastors and people of the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands, which we had seen earlier, receive the teachings of the Nicolaitans, commit sexual immorality with the spirit of Satan, and eat the food sacrificed to idols. At this time, Jesus selects one person, the advocate or the messenger, to send the letters telling these people who had betrayed to repent. However, even after receiving the letters, they do not repent. And those who do not repent will be judged in Revelation chapter 6 and will fall from the heavens to the earth and they will be thrown out. And they will be thrown out to the caves, to the mountains and the rocks of the Gentiles. Those who became part of the Gentiles will receive the 666, the mark of the beast, just as it is stated in Revelation chapter 13. And it is written that they will become the possession of Satan and they will be destroyed. Such content is spiritually the same today as the events when the pastors and the people of Jerusalem were destroyed by the Pharisees and the scribes, the pastors of the serpent at the time of the first coming. Then in verses 8 and 9, 
it says that there are a few remaining seeds, a small number of believers who do not perish even during this time of destruction, but they keep themselves pure within their life of faith. Let's read verses 8 and 9 together. The daughter of Zion is left like a shelter in a vineyard, like a hut in a field of melons, like a city under siege. Unless the Lord Almighty had left us some survivors, we would have become like Sodom, we would have been like Gomorrah. Yes, so verses 8 and 9 talk about some survivors, the little remaining seed of salvation. As it is said that the daughter of Zion is left like a city under siege, and also from the words that God has left us some survivors, we can see that God had left and He had preserved a small number of believers who kept their faith within the midst of destruction. If we take a look at the first coming, Jesus, who overcame with the word of truth within the corrupt world of Judaism, is a small remaining seed. And so are the disciples who had believed in Jesus and came to Jesus from Judaism at that time. This same event as the reference chapter also exists within the book of Revelation. In Revelation chapter 6, the sun, moon, and stars darken and fall, and this is a time of destruction where the chosen people enter into the caves, mountains, and rocks of the Gentiles. This is in Revelation chapter 6 verse 6, a quart of wheat and three quarts of barley that is referenced. These people become the small remaining seed of salvation at the Lord's second coming. If there were no such small remaining seed as we had seen in verse 9, it says that we would have become like Sodom and Gomorrah. From here, we must understand that in each and every era of the Bible, when the world of faith becomes corrupted through the few believers who keep the integrity and the purity of their faith that the work of salvation can take place. Today as well, through the believers who are like a quart of wheat and three quarts of barley, the work of salvation that has never happened before in the past 6,000 years will fulfill as seen in Revelation chapter 7 and 14. And this is through the work of the creation of the 12 tribes through the work of harvest and sealing. Our chairman, the promised pastor or shepherd, who received the word of revelation of the fulfillment of the New Testament, is actively testifying this to the entire world. Everyone who is attending today, please confirm and verify for yourselves that this is the work of recreation that is being fulfilled today with the few remaining believers of Revelation 6. Next, let's read verses 10 through 15. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. The multitude of your sacrifices, what are they to me, says the Lord? I have more than enough burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fattened animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. When you come to appear before me, who has asked this of you, this trampling of my courts? Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. New moons, Sabbaths, and convocations. I cannot bear your evil assemblies. Your new moon festivals and your appointed feasts my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Even if you offer many prayers, I will not listen. The words up to verse 15 are saying that God will not receive the worship and the prayers of the chosen people who have betrayed. The reason the people of the tribe of Judah are called as the rulers of Sodom and the people of Gomorrah is because the chosen people became one with the Gentiles and became the same Gentiles themselves. Therefore, God says that He is not pleased with the offerings given by those who became one with the Gentiles. And he also tells them to stop bringing meaningless offerings. 
God also says that He cannot bear the new moons and the Sabbaths and the convocations either. The new moons and the Sabbaths are gatherings to offer sacrifices to God, and in today's words, it is gathering to worship God. However, it is saying that God does not accept the worship and even the sacrifices of the rebellious chosen people who have become one with the Gentiles and have become the Gentiles themselves. And in verse 15, it says that their hands are full of blood and that God will not hear the prayers of those who have blood on them. The same content as this is in Revelation chapter 18, verse 24 as well. It is said that the blood of all the martyrs was found in the city of Babylon. To say that their hands are full of blood refers to the fact that they have committed murder. What kind of murder is this? In 1 John chapter 3, verse 15, it says that hating a brother is also murder. In the religious world, hatred is, in other words, persecution. So if a person causes religious hatred and persecutes people because of different denominations and different doctrines, then this is considered a spiritual murder in God's eyes. Such persecution and hatred kills a person's spirit and faith, and it can even lead to physical murder as well. Wasn't Jesus also hated and persecuted by the rebellious Jews, and wasn't He ultimately crucified as well? Not only this, but also in John chapter 16, verses 1 to 2, Jesus said to His disciples, All this I have told you, so that you will not go astray. And He said, Anyone who kills you will think that he is offering a service to God, and this was for the second coming as well. As these people are those who offer a service to God, it means that the believers of God would be doing such things. Today, the traditional Protestants in Korea have persecuted Shincheonji and the promised pastor or shepherd and labeled it as heretics. And as a result, four Shincheonji members were killed by severe persecution and by coercive conversion. The prophecies of persecution, as seen in John chapter 16, are also in Matthew chapters 10 and 25. If the words that prophesy the reality of today's world of faith are recorded in this New Testament, then we must enter the Bible and look at ourselves to see if we are the people who are persecuted, those who even love our enemies, or if we are those who hated and persecuted our brothers or even belong to the denomination that persecutes others. We must discern through the Bible and repent of our shortcomings and live a life of faith that corrects them. In Hosea chapter 6, verse 6, God said that He wanted us to know Him rather than offering the burnt offerings and sacrifices. Through this seminar, let us make sure that we clearly understand what God's will is and walk a faith life that is according to the Word. Let's continue reading verses 16 through 20. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Encourage the oppressed. Defend the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat from the best of the land. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Yes, up to verse 20 are God's words that call for the repentance of the chosen people who had betrayed. They are the words that command them to wash, make themselves clean, to take the evil deeds out, and to stop doing wrong. And this is a call for repentance. 
And when he says to learn to do what is right and to seek justice, it means to live a life of faith within the Word of God. The widows and the orphans are also mentioned here. Of course, there are physical widows and orphans, but these here are the spiritual widows and the orphans. Spiritual widows refer to the pastor who has betrayed, from whom the Spirit has departed, and the spiritual orphans refer to the members of the pastor from whom the Spirit has departed. When we examine verses 18 to 20 now, God does not wish to deliver only judgment, but He wished to communicate with the chosen people that had betrayed. He says that if they will communicate, if they will reason, that even though their sins are like scarlet, they will become as white as wool and as white as snow. The will of God in this is that through the communication, God wishes to give the forgiveness of sins and He wishes to give salvation. One must come before the Word of God and communicate with God to receive healing, to be renewed, and to be born again as a true believer. Everyone who is attending this seminar today, we believe that you have come before the Word and that now is the blessed time where we are able to communicate with God. In verse 19, it is said that if we obey and come to the Word to communicate, that we will receive the blessings. And in the words of verse 20, it says that if we refuse to do so, that we'll be devoured by the sword, meaning that we will be judged by God's Word. Let's now read verses 21 to 23. See how the faithful city has become a harlot. She once was full of justice. Righteousness used to dwell in her. But now murderers. Your silver has become dross. Your choice wine is diluted with water. Your rulers are rebels, companions of thieves. They all love bribes and chase after gifts. They do not defend the cause of the fatherless. The widow's case does not come before them. Yes, the words up to verse 23 tells us the reality of the faithful city. It says that they have become a harlot and that there are only murderers there. This harlot here is a spiritual harlot who commits adultery with the spirit of Satan and has received Satan's seed. And as for the murderer, of course, there is physical murder too, but as we had stated earlier, the one who hates and persecutes their brother is also a spiritual murderer. And it is said that their silver has become dross and their choice wine is diluted with water. This means that the word of God was mixed with the words of the world and so their preaching has become falsehood and lies. When we hear these words, we need to think deeply about whether the lectures and sermons of our denomination and our church are with a perfect truth, or if they are the words of God mixed with the words of the world. And in verse 23, the rulers are mentioned, and these rulers refer to the leaders, meaning pastors. It means that the pastors of Jerusalem are rebellious, becoming companions of thieves, and that they love bribes and chase after gifts, meaning that they have become the lovers of money. The leaders who are supposed to lead the people became even more rebellious in their faith, and while they should be working for the powerless and the weak, they do not do that, but they are only filling their own self-interests. This is the reality of the corrupted faith of those who have departed from God and from His Word. Even today, it is said that there are spiritual murderers, magic arts, sexual immorality, and thefts as shown in Revelation chapter 9, verse 21. But it says that people do not repent even if they were told about this. The book of Revelation is especially about today's world of faith. 
So we must examine our own faith by using these words as examples and warnings. Now let's continue and read verses 24 through 27. Therefore the Lord, the Lord Almighty, the Mighty One of Israel declares, Ah, I will get relief from my foes and avenge myself on my enemies. I will turn my hand against you. I will thoroughly purge away your dross and remove all your impurities. I will restore your judges as in the days of old, your counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, you will be called the City of Righteousness, the Faithful City. Zion will be redeemed with justice, her penitent ones with righteousness. The words up to verse 27 are about the judgment of the destroyers and the penitent ones who have returned to righteousness. God promises to avenge Himself on His foes and on His enemies. Therefore, these are the words about the judgment of the destroyers. And at the time of this judgment on the destroyers, God is saying that among the people of God who are captured by the destroyers, if anyone hears the words of God and comes out to Him again, that their dross and impurities will be removed. This means that He will cleanse the sins and the filth that are inside of His people. And in verse 26, it is said that God will restore the people to their original state. And it is said that Zion will be redeemed with justice and her penitent ones with righteousness. In Zechariah chapter 2 verse 7, God's people are called as Zion. So it means that God's people who return at the time of judgment will be redeemed justly and that they will be saved. But even at this time of judgment upon the destroyers, there are those who do not repent until the end. Who are they and what will happen to them? Let's read verses 28 through 31. But rebels and sinners will both be broken and those who forsake the Lord will perish. You will be ashamed because of the sacred oaks in which you have delighted. You will be disgraced because of the gardens that you have chosen. You will be like an oak with fading leaves, like a garden without water. The mighty man will become tinder, and his work a spark. Both will burn together with no one to quench the fire. The words up to verse 31 are about the consequences of those who do not repent until the end, when God judges the destroyers, and even when He saves His people who are in captivity. It is said that all rebels, sinners, and those who forsake God will perish. Also, the oak trees and the chosen gardens are mentioned as well. The oak tree that the chosen people who betrayed have chosen after forsaking God refers to a false pastor who is a destroyer like the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and the garden that the betrayers chose is a Gentile nation, the church of the destroyers. It is said that they will be disgraced because of this, and it means that God's chosen people who had forsaken God and chosen the Gentile nation would result in eternal disgrace and judgment. And when it is described as an oak with fading leaves, he was saying that the spirit of the chosen people who betrayed would die like an oak with fading leaves, that is a dead tree, and also that their tabernacle would be destroyed like a garden without water. It is also said that both the chosen people who betrayed and the destroyers would receive the eternal judgment of fire, which is the word of God, and that no one would be able to put it out. In this way, in Isaiah chapter 1, there were the records about the betrayal and destruction of the chosen people, the judgment of the destroyers, and Zion, the people of God who were redeemed with justice. Then, what happens to God's people who are being saved like this? 
Let's read Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Yes, the words up to verse 3 is about the place where all nations will come and learn. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 1 also mentions Judah and Jerusalem. Judah and Jerusalem in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 1 refer to the chosen people who betrayed, and Judah and Jerusalem in Isaiah chapter 2 verse 1 is the recreated chosen people after the betrayal and destruction. They are God's new kingdom and new people. And in verse 2, it speaks about the last days and the mountain of the Lord's temple. The last days does not refer to the last days of the world, but the last days of the religious world. And the mountain of the Lord's temple is a spiritual mountain of Zion, which refers to God's temple. And in verse 3, the mountain of the Lord appears, and its name is Mount Zion. It is said that because the law goes out from this Zion, many people will come to this mountain to learn the word of God. According to the fact that the word of God comes out from this Mount Zion, we can see God, who is the word, is together in this Zion. In Zechariah chapter 8, verse 3, it also says that God will return to Zion. Where is this Mount Zion where God who is life returns to? In Isaiah chapter 60, verse 14, there is a person, you, who is called as a city of God and the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. So the one who is chosen by God the promised pastor or shepherd, becomes a spiritual Zion. If we go to the first coming and examine this Zion, Jesus, who came as a light and was also with God, He was the Zion of the first coming. And at the first coming, the organization made up of the saints who belonged to Jesus were also Mount Zion. Now let's take a look at the reality of Mount Zion that is established in the last days through the prophecies of the New Testament. Let's read the words of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to Him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy, report, or letter supposed to have come from us, saying that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. Yes. As you have read, in the words of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, it reveals that there will be the work of betrayal, destruction, and salvation at the second coming of the Lord, just like it was written in the book of Isaiah. Then let's take a look at this work of betrayal, destruction, and salvation from the prophecies of the four Gospels of the New Testament. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 to 16, it says that when the abomination that causes desolation stands in the holy place, those who can read should flee to the mountains. Also in Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 30, and in verses 36 to 43, Jesus speaks about the sowing of two kinds of seeds and the time of the harvest. He says that when the harvest time comes, those born of God's seed among the two seeds, they are the sons of heaven who will be harvested and go to the kingdom of God. This kingdom of God, where these harvested fruits are gathered, 
is the Mount Zion mentioned in Isaiah chapter 2 in today's reference chapter as well as in Revelation chapter 14. Now let's check the order of how this Mount Zion is established through the words of the book of Revelation. As seen in Isaiah chapter 1 earlier, in Revelation chapters 1, 2, and 3, there are the pastors and the members of the church of the seven stars and seven golden lampstands. In Revelation chapters 2 and 3, it says that they had eaten the food sacrificed to idols, committed adultery with the spirit of Satan, and betrayed. Therefore, the betrayers at the time of Revelation's fulfillment are the pastors and the members of the church of the seven golden lampstands. In the end, as in Revelation chapter 6 and 13, they are judged by God and are completely destroyed by the destroyers, the Gentiles. At this time, the destroyer that destroys the church of the seven golden lampstands is the beast with seven heads and ten horns of Babylon, mentioned in Revelation chapters 13, 17, and 18. In this way, when the events of betrayal and destruction appear, just as stated in Revelation chapter 14, verses 14 to 16, the harvesting angels harvest the wheat like believers from the location of betrayal and destruction to Mount Zion in Revelation chapter 14. On this Mount Zion, there is a throne of God, there is Jesus the Lamb, and the ripened and harvested first fruits. It is said that the names of God and Jesus are written on the foreheads of these first fruits. They are those who are sealed by God's seal in Revelation chapter 7, the twelve tribes of the new spiritual Israel, the kingdom and the priests of God. The most important thing is that these people of the twelve tribes who are harvested and sealed in Revelation chapter 7 and 14 are the sons of the kingdom mentioned in Matthew chapter 13, the reality of those who are harvested. They are the people who receive salvation and inherit heaven and eternal life at this time. On the other hand, the chosen people who betrayed, who are driven out by the Gentiles and received the mark of the beast in Revelation chapter 6 and 13, did not believe the word or reality even after seeing the events of destruction, nor did they flee to the mountain, nor were they harvested. Therefore, they get completely destroyed by the beast and will be punished in the lake of burning sulfur in hell. This is the result of those who were not able to be harvested. Finally, let's read the words of Isaiah chapter 2 verse 4. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war any more. In Isaiah chapter 2 verse 4, it talks about beating the spears into pruning hooks, meaning that wars will cease and peace will be established. It says that nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. In the words of Isaiah chapter 52 verse 7, he also promised a world of peace where wars have ended and a world in which God will reign over all things. In regards to this joyous time, in Revelation chapter 21, it says that God will return to the new heaven and new earth. It promises that God who is life will return and would bring about a world of peace and eternal life without death or pain or war, as said in verse 4. In Shincheonji, we have the promised pastor or shepherd who has fought and overcome the group of the dragon, as in Revelation chapter 12, and received all the 12 blessings promised in Revelation chapters 2 and 3. And we, the 12 tribes, are the realities of the first fruits that were harvested from the field of Jesus, and belong to the twelve tribes of God. Shincheonji's promised pastor 
has done the work of peace while traveling around the world 31 times as a messenger of peace to achieve this world of peace without war as in Isaiah chapter 2 verse 4. He held many discussion forums comparing the scriptures of each religion so that all religions can be united in one under the best scripture, and he presented practical answers that can be implemented to the world in order to achieve a world of peace without war in this global village tainted with conflict. These are a few examples of the various peace works that he is doing. Now let's summarize the key points of today's lecture. Through Isaiah and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we have seen the order of betrayal, destruction, and salvation to create God's new kingdom, Mount Zion, which will stand in the last days. And this new kingdom of God, Mount Zion, does not just come to be, but according to the process in the Bible, it is created through the ripened fruits of the seed that Jesus had sown in His first coming, and the people who are harvested and sealed after the events of betrayal and destruction today. And this Mount Zion that is created is a new spiritual Israel in Revelation chapter 7. It must have the 12 tribes. These are the decisive evidence points that can testify to Mount Zion. Any place cannot just become Mount Zion, but it must appear after the events of betrayal and destruction. It must also be created through the harvest and sealing, and it must have the organization of the 12 tribes in order for it to be Mount Zion that is promised in the Bible. Today, at the time of the fulfillment of the book of Revelation, this event of salvation has been fulfilled in Korea with the overcomer and the 12 tribes of Shincheonji. So you must all confirm it with the Bible and become the blessed believers who receive the blessings of heaven and eternal life. Next time, a lecturer who is more skilled than I will come and testify of the word under the title, The Sealed Book and the Revelation of the Old Testament and the New Testament. I hope that you will attend and have a precious time to receive grace and to perceive. Now, I will shout, We are one, with the meaning that we are now one in God and in Jesus, and then we will pray afterwards. In God and in Jesus, we are one. We are one. We will end here and offer up a prayer. Our most holy Father God, to whom we are thankful, we are truly grateful to you for allowing us to hold the Shincheonji Online Seminar on the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter and to have this throughout the entire world. Father God, please remember the many pastors, seminarians, and saints who attended this event and please keep them in your heart. Today, we have taken a look at Intermediate Lesson 3, the order of betrayal, destruction, and salvation of the chosen people. Please allow all people who receive the testimony of this word to understand the location where betrayal and destruction happens today, where the location of salvation, where the harvest and sealed people is, the place recreated after 6,000 years. Allow all of us to partake in your new kingdom and be blessed believers through your guidance, Father God. We ask you to protect the spiritual and physical health of all of those who have attended. Continue to look over each of our circumstances so that we can attend the next session as well and be joyous in the word of truth and to be able to receive grace. We pray all these words with faith in the name of Jesus, who atoned us of our sins. Amen. Thank you very much for listening to the end. The Book of Prophecy is a sealed book because no one can know until it is fulfilled. How did the sealed book and revelation of the New Testament appear? And what is the revelation of the New Testament? 
There is no heaven nor salvation except through Revelation. It has to be through the book of Revelation, hidden in the parable of the secrets of heaven. To whom did the angel give the book that he has received? May you become a precious family of faith in the global village that receives all of the words of Revelation. I pray in Jesus' name. Everyone, did you receive much grace from the word today? Next time, it will be Lesson 4, the sealed book and the revelation of the Old Testament and the New Testament. I hope you will attend, and through the word of promise, you will be able to understand the true will of God as well as His heart, and become the family of heaven who can be together in the kingdom of God. All the believers around the world may have come from different nationalities, peoples, languages, or genders, but all have the same sincere heart to long for God's word. I believe we are all one in God's love and in His word of truth. So, in order to become one in the word, seminaries and pastors, around the world are coming to Shincheonji in the hopes of signing an MOU with us. And at this very moment as well, there are a lot of MOUs being signed. If you have any further questions regarding Shincheonji Church or its word, please feel free to contact us anytime. We will be happy to guide you in detail. Lastly, I give thanks to the pastors, seminarians, and the saints around the world who have joined and made this time more special. I pray for the grace of God always overflowingly on you. Now we will conclude all the programs for today and will give the prayer that the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us of our sins, as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining with us.